Hey Church, welcome to United Church. If you are joining us, especially for the first time, then a special welcome to you. And congratulations for making it to church online. We are so excited to have you here. As you can see, we're doing something slightly different today. Um, I've got someone with me who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, Pastor Johan Mana from Church Alive in Northcliffe, Johannesburg. And so we've been saying that we'll be speaking to Pastor Johan today regarding the Holy Spirit as we wrap up our series. And so we're going to dive straight into it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray, and then we'll um, begin to chat Pastor Johan and I. So let's begin to pray. God, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for this message that we're about to hear, even though it's just an interview. I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that today, um, even though we've spoken about the questions before, but may the answers just bring um, a sense of clarity. May it bring hope. Um, may it bring just a bit of direction for people today. I pray that as we, as we hear this, may there be something in our spirit that just shifts, and may your Holy Spirit begin to speak to us. I pray, God, that as we learn about your spirit, may it not just be an arbitrary um, topic that we hear about, but may it be something that resonates personally with each and every one of us. We pray this in your name today. Amen. 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 Pastor Johan, how are you? Pastor Randy. <sighs> Good, good to see you. Yeah, good you to see too. You. It is so great to be with you and with United Church today. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you. It's an absolute privilege. He's a nice guy. You have a nice pastor. Thank you. A nice guy. A nice guy. You heard it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said earlier, you know, Pastor Jan, you are someone who I have a tremendous amount of respect for in so many areas. Um, your family, um, your church, just having known you for the amount of time that I've known you. Thank I look you. up to you guys. Mutual. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for doing this. And for those of you who don't know, like we've been saying, Pastor Johan just wrote a book called mm -hmm. Live the Third Person which centers around the Holy Spirit. And before we get into it, let me ask you, what prompted you to write this book? Well, it's been uh, many years. It actually started out in a journey, or the journey of the book started out in college. And um, I was in an environment in college that I really appreciated. Um, it was an environment that said, or that gave you the liberty to test the things that you've learned. Ah, great, um, great. From a scriptural basis. Yes. And, um, and so I've walked a very interesting journey with the Holy Spirit and just him as a person from a biblical perspective and kind of weighing, it, weighing him up against the things that I've been taught mm. and reconciling those and getting my head around that. So it's been an incredible journey for me. Fantastic. I think all of us can learn something from it because it's not, yeah. it's not the kind of topic that you just learn about once and it's over. Yep. It's something we learn about for the rest of all our lives. All the time, all the time. Fantastic. Let's get into the first question um, because I think this is something that many people have been struggling with. Let's speak about the Holy Spirit as God because you, you, mm -hmm. you have a chapter on this in your yes, book. Yes. Um, and so what, what, would, what, what would you say to people who struggle to to join the concepts of God and the Holy Spirit. I think many people struggle with those two and to reconcile them. Yeah. And so speak to us a bit about that. So there's, there's a, a school of thought out there that sees the Holy Spirit or every single person of the Trinity, the three persons of the Trinity, as an expression of God. Mm. So for instance, um, uh, Jesus was God in human form, but it was an expression of God. Yeah. And so they also believe that the Holy Spirit is an expression of God mm. to us as we live practical life. But it's very dangerous and it's definitely not biblical to see God like that yeah. um, because God is three persons. He's mm. not one person expressing himself in different context in, mm. in different ways. Um, so, so, for instance, let me, let me give you um, an example. He's called the third person, but there's no, there's no hierarchy in the Trinity. Yes. Okay? yes. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are on equal terms. They, yes. they are one. So now, now the question is, so why then are they called the first, the second, and the third persons of the Trinity? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that relates primarily to their work of salvation. Mm. So um, God sent the Son, yes. Jesus Christ, and then Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit. Mm. But that is the only context in which we can almost see them as three separate people. Mm. In fact, in fact, when you go look at the God's work in creation, 
there seems to be an indication that it was the Holy Spirit that pitched up first. Yes, the Spirit of God was hovering. Because he hovered yeah. over the yeah. void before yeah. God spoke the word which was Jesus, yes. which brought uh, um, uh, creation about. And that is why Paul says of him, uh, Jesus Christ, that through him, everything All, was created yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So basically what you're saying is that people need to shift their mindsets from thinking of the Holy Spirit as part of a linear progression of God yes. instead Very seeing Him as God, yes, one yes. God. So, so for instance, um, uh, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus God? Yes. Yes, He is. Is God Jesus? Ooh. <laughs> Interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the answer is no, because God is not an expression of one particular person. Yes, yeah. He's three persons. Yeah. And that's why it's very dangerous to kind of... And you know what? I, I've, I have spoken to people and uh, Christians, and mm. when they talk about God, they only talk about Him in terms of the Father. Daddy God, Father... And, and that's all good. That's yeah. all good. But you can't do that and at the exclusion of your understanding yeah. and how we embrace God as three persons. Yes. He's not just Daddy God. He is that. Yeah. But He's also the Son who died for our sins. Yes. He's the Holy Spirit that helps us and guides us yes. to live out our, our Christian life. Yeah. Um, and and that, is, that is why that is so important to have that full picture and understanding Fantastic. Of, of the Trinity. What, what I think over the years... In Christian tradition, what we've tried to do is we've tried to come up with analogies that help people understand mm, it. Yeah. But in doing so, over time, sometimes we also could skew certain yes, understandings. Yes. In trying to explain it a certain way, yeah. we actually take away from yeah. the overall view Absolutely. that is important. Yeah. And I think it's, it's right what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, fantastic. So let's get into the second question. And what we spoke about in, as part of our series is how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Mm. Now, throughout the book of Acts, you see how the Holy Spirit speaks to different people in different ways. Yes. You see how He prompts them and leads them to mm -hmm. phenomenal supernatural acts. Mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing to see that journey. However, um, one of the things that we try to narrow it down to is just saying, you know what, the Holy Spirit speaks through prayer, through the scriptures, and through personal impressions. Yeah. There's obviously many other ways mm -hmm. in which He speaks, but those are just three of the more prominent ways um, yeah that we hear him speak. So, would you mind helping us understand how do we differentiate um, the Holy Spirit's voice mm. from our biases? Mm. Because it's so easy for us to get a thought and say, well, that was God, and mm. later realize that wasn't. Mm. Um, or we sometimes think, was that just a thought that I had? Yes. And then we don't, you know, how do we differentiate yeah. between the two? Yeah. Um, I, I think it is very important um, to step back to Scripture. You know, mm. sometimes people, and people ask that question, apart from Scripture, ah. <laughs> you know, apart, how does the Holy Spirit speak mm. to you? And that's actually a very dangerous question to ask because so many believers get into a space where they're constantly listening, they, they're developing this voice that they hear, mm. but when you sit them down, you find out they hardly read Scripture. Mm. Very dangerous place to be yeah. because... The Spirit of God will not speak in any way that is contrary to the Word of God. Yes. Um, in fact, uh, I, I wrote down this, this verse, um, uh, Jesus speaking to his disciples in John 14, 26. He says, but when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, mm. you must always remember yes. that. The Spirit is Christ's representative, mm. right? He says, that is the Holy Spirit he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told yes, you. Yes, right? I love that verse. So, so everything that the Spirit speaks to us about in any context, doesn't matter what it is, mm -hmm. has to line up with God's Word. Now, now the question is always, now what I'm talking, I'm asking the Spirit to help me around my job or my family, yes. or help me resolve a marital problem. Mm -hmm. How's that? Well, um, Whatever you feel the Spirit of God is saying to you cannot be contrary to the Spirit of God's Word. Yeah. Um, if, if it goes against that, for, let me give you an example. Um, uh, and and I've, I don't know about you, but I've, actually, I've heard some of these. <laughs> God's Spirit told me to divorce my spouse and to marry this person. Ooh, 
right? <laughs> no, I've prayed about it, Pastor, and, and I'm convinced about it. So, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're going to stop the conversation right there. Mm. Because the Spirit of God will never tell you something to do that is contrary to God's, to God's Word. Yeah. And, and what you're telling me here is, is definitely contrary to, to God's Word. Mm. Another very important role player here is community. Yes. I get very scared of people who, who are always on about the things they hear the Spirit saying, mm -hmm. but they don't belong to a church. Yes. Yes. They, they're not being held accountable. There's, there's no perspective. It's just them. And for all, as far as I'm concerned, their own thoughts. Yeah. And this, this is where it comes back to what you spoke earlier on, our biases. Yeah. Our biases of fear, a worldview, yeah. culture, yeah. Yeah, uh, experiences, um, yeah, hurts, our yeah. pains. Yeah. Our pains speak to us. And sometimes we go, this must be the voice of the Lord. Say, exactly. no, go back to scripture. Go speak to your leaders, speak to your, yes. speak to your, your, your small group, your life group, or yeah. whatever it is. Get a godly perspective around what you feel the Spirit of God is saying to you. Yeah. Sure, that's so good. When you spoke, I was reminded, if I look at Paul's journey throughout the book of Acts, mm, mm. you see that even when there were times when he thought he heard the Holy Spirit and he was conflicted about something, they would always go back to Jerusalem. Yes and consult with the church That's elders right. and That's get right. direction. And, yeah. and what I love about it is, there, you know, there's phrases like, it seemed good to us and to the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so I, I, I actually quote that one in, in the in book. In the book, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And so there's always going back and saying, well, these are our preferences. Mm. Let's go back and hear what yes, God is saying. And I yes. think that central theme of coming back, and in the book of Acts, you see it constantly where they come back, or the, or the council sends representatives mm. out to kind of, you know, mm. redirect some mm. stuff. But mm. for me, that's so important to have that basis of community mm. to determine. So I yeah. feel God is saying this to me. I could be wrong. Yes. Let me ask one or two of my brothers or yeah. sisters, or let yeah. me consult leadership. And I think yes. many people struggle with that step mm. because many people want to be autonomous. Yes, yes, yes. And in, sometimes, in sometimes decisions. you actually know what the truth is. Yes. But you don't want it to come out. Yes, yes. <laughs> it takes a great deal of humility to come <laughs> yes. forward and say, "Hey." Yes. And you know, I was explaining it to someone this way when making a decision. I always put my biases out there first. Yes. God. You know I want yeah, to do this. That's it. However, very good. And and I think putting it out there and being honest about mm. it and humble about it helps you then know mm. that when God is redirecting yeah. you, okay, yeah. this is what it is. And and so you know, it, it's very dangerous when people say, um, "I've heard from the Spirit. I don't need to speak to people." Yes. You know. Yes. Then why does the Bible tell us that there's wisdom in the counsel of many? Yes. If we if all we need is to test every the spirit, voice yeah. of the Spirit. No, no, no. We got to test it. We have got yeah. to test it. And, Phenomenal. And, yeah. Very, very it's good. good. Okay, as we move on to the following one, I think this is one that I like as well because we're speaking about how the Holy Spirit empowers us. Now, mm. you've, you've spoken about this in your book. Yes. In, um, you mentioned, I love this phrase, it says the Holy Spirit's purpose is to empower God's people to be effective witnesses to the life, love, mm. and teachings of yeah. Jesus. I yeah. love that quote because yes. that is exactly yeah. what we are meant to be. Yeah. The irony, however, is that many, many Christians live seemingly powerless lives mm. when it comes to being or feeling empowered by the Holy Spirit because mm. the reality of everyday life weighs mm. down on mm. us. Mm. You know that I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't feel like yeah. it. I don't see it. What do I do? So would you mind encouraging us as believers as to what we do when we feel powerless? Mm. How, how do we navigate that journey yeah. of not only feeling empowered, but practically becoming empowered? Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's, it's something I spend quite a bit of time in the book highlighting. Mm. And the reason I did that is because people see the role of the Holy Spirit as empowering to do business better. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> or empowering them to uh, study harder mm. or whatever that is. Now, now, don't hear what I'm not saying. Am I saying that God is not interested in our lives in terms of business, our marriages, and, and that stuff? Of course He is. Of yeah. course He is. But we cannot lose sight of the fact that Jesus made it very clear, and it became evident on the day of Pentecost, yes. that the reason why the Holy Spirit came was to empower us to be witnesses of Jesus. In mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, before Jesus left, He actually said to His disciples, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will empower you to be my witnesses mm. and to tell people about me everywhere. Yeah. 
And that is what he said. Yeah. So how do, we, how do I bring that into uh, the space of my everyday life experiences? If, if you don't mind, I, I'm, I, I would love to tell you a little story yeah, of my yeah, own cool. experiences in this. Um, so 19, 1996, married the girl of my dreams. 1997, she encouraged me to start a business, right? Mm. So now, if you've ever started a business before, and if, if, if there's anybody out there that knows what a business is all about, yeah. you have this epiphany at this one, at some stage early on, where you go, oh my word, it's me and the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, nobody's going to give you time off for holidays or for sick. It's yeah. you and the world. And oh my word, I remember saying to Debbie, I need to start praying. I need God's grace in this. How are we going to do this without God's grace? Mm -hmm. And I would pray. <clears throat> and uh, so I started to, to get into these spiritual habits in my everyday business life. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I kind of patted myself on the back. This is really good. You're putting God into the space. You know? <laughs> you're, being, you're being a good steward of this. You're acknowledging God in this. Mm -hmm. And so I had this habit before I made a call because I, I was into sales. I would sit in my car and I would pray and I would go, Lord, I just commit this call to you. You know what I need. If, if this is not a good one, then, you know, uh, give me a sense of discernment. Let the hair on yeah. the back of my head stand <laughs> up, and, you know, and, and then I'll know, or, you know, activate the gifts of the yeah. spirit. Yeah. Yes, yes, the thing though, <laughs> most, most Christians will say, yeah, that's good. You must do that. Of course you must do that. The problem is my focus was on my business. I wanted to pull the Holy Spirit into my business. Yes. And it didn't take long be before the Spirit of God started to speak to me and say to me, why am I here? Mm. I'm not here for your business. I want to sure. be involved in your life, but my primary purpose is here is not for business. So now I'm going, okay, how does this work? So this is what I want you to pray. I want you to pray that I will open your eyes when you go on that call. Mm -hmm. Not separating this experience with the Holy Spirit outside yeah. of the everyday practical life. But God said, when you go on that call, ask that the Spirit of God will empower you to see the person. Yes. And not the money that the person has. Yes, yes, yes. To I sit in front of a stranger. And I cannot tell you how many times. I can probably write another book just on that. <laughs> Those experiences. Those experiences of sitting in front of strangers and we're there for a business call. And it, it takes 10, 15 minutes into the conversation and this person will start opening up to me about their marriages, sure. about their personal lives, their fears. Wow. And amazing things happen at the end of the conversation. The first thing they do is they go, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I did this. <laughs> yes. I haven't even told half this stuff to my friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm spilling out the beans, you know, everything. I yeah. don't even know you. Why am I doing this? And I say, don't worry. Sure. Your story is safe with me. And I would ask them if I can pray for them. And wow. sometimes, sometimes, we'd also close a deal and <laughs> sell some stuff. Yeah, but yeah. it changed my perspective. You see, the Spirit of God wants us to be... He, he wants to be involved in every part of life. Yeah. But he doesn't want us to lose focus that it's not about us. Yeah. It's not about my comfort. That's not what, why the Holy Spirit's there. Yeah. He's there because for the same reason that Jesus said he would come. Because he wants us to be witnesses. When, when people look into our eyes, mm -hmm. when, they, they, when they watch us live life, when they listen to our words, who do they hear? Who do they see? Yeah. Yeah. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and I think, I think Christians are... <coughs> excuse me. Christians are a little bit afraid of that dynamic that I'm supposed to be a witness of Jesus yeah. because they're so scared of other people and other yes. people's objections yes. around Christianity. Yeah. But the way I, I want to encourage somebody yet today is mm. this. Mm. Think of it in terms of this. A witness is like a reporter. Mm. Okay? Yep. Now, now, reporters and media, they actually deemed essential services right now. You, <laughs> you and I, <laughs> you and I, as witnesses of Jesus Christ, are an essential part of what the globe is going through right now. Yeah. Think about a, a reporter. You know why they stand out in a crowd? It's because mm. they've got the garb on. Mm. 
They dressed in either bright vests. They've got these tags around them. They've got cameras around them. You can see a reporter in a crowd because they've always got a light. Yeah. yeah you can, they, reporters are lit. <laughs> United Youth, come on. <laughs> so, here's a question. What are you dressed in? As a believer, mm. when you're in a crowd, mm. can people see the righteousness of God? Yeah. What are you dressed in? Can they see the light of His love mm. shining, radiating, bouncing off you? That's why reporters sure. are. It's not because they walk around with a big Bible and going, come on, who, who needs to? You're all going to hell. No. Yeah, they yeah. just, wherever they are, wherever they there's are, there's something in them. There's something, something in them. them. And, yeah. and the other thing about a reporter, a reporter doesn't make up the news. Christians are so scared to talk to other people about Jesus because they think they have to be these theologians to, yeah. to really convince people. But what does a reporter do? It, it's at the heart of the very word witness. Yeah. What I've experienced about Jesus, that's what I need to go and report. Exactly. This is who he is to me. This is my experience yeah. of him. This is why I'm a Christian. This is why I follow him. Yeah, See, yeah. now, when, when a reporter goes to somebody and says, this is what I saw, and that person comes with an objection and says, no, you couldn't have seen that. The reporter goes, oh, well, you can is. do with it whatever you want. I'm just telling you, this is what I witnessed. Yes. This yes. is what I felt. This is what I experienced. You can do with that whatever you want. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I just want to encourage you, if you're watching this, um, Regardless of the discipline you find yourself in, um, wherever you work, whether you're a salesperson, teacher, lecturer, admin, engineer, this is so true and it applies to every circumstance, mm, mm. to see the people before we see the task. Yeah. I know most of us do jobs where we deal with people on a daily basis, mm. and so let us trust the Holy Spirit that He would use us. Let us not use the Holy Spirit as a means to an end, let us trust Him to use us where we are. And you know what's so important about this is we just celebrated Ascension Day this past week. Mm. This is especially important because it's a reminder of how we were empowered by the Spirit in order to do the work that God had called us to do. Mm. I trust that this is encouraging you so far. I'm loving it. This is amazing. Let's go on to the next one. So let's talk about spiritual gifts because this is another one of your chapters yes. in your book and I yes. think this is also important for us yeah. um, who live in everyday life mm -hmm. um, that the Holy Spirit distributes gifts to His church. Yeah. He gives, you know, someone once said to me and I love the saying, everything the church needs is in the church. Yes. He's gifted the church yes. with what it needs. Yeah. And so, from, you know, just your, your perspective, what are the main purposes of spiritual gifts and how can <clears throat> we exercise them on a daily basis? Mm. So, one of the... Uh, two very important things that I highlight in the book. The one is that the gifts of the Spirit are given by the Spirit mm. at His prerogative. Yes. So yeah. you cannot earn it. Yeah. There's no merit behind it. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't, it's, it's not an indication of your spiritual maturity. Yes. Um, so practically, have you, ever, have you ever looked at somebody with a specific spiritual gift and go, God, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why, why that? No. Why that gift? <laughs> right? I'm not going to admit that on screen. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I hear go, you. I hear you, know, you. It is so weird. It's like, man, mm. they, they've got so many flaws. And, and you actually, you know, it's like, no. And that is the heart of it. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's a question we'll never, ever get answered because... Quite frankly, as far as God is concerned, I think it's none of our business. Exactly. Yeah. Say, why do people get certain, why do some people get certain gifts? Yeah. It's none of our business. In fact, why do I have my gifts? I've, got, I've asked God that question. He gives me the same answer. It's none <laughs> of your business. Every pastor sat right. before God thinking, why me? <laughs> exactly. And the other thing is that, that the Word of God makes it very clear that the spiritual gifts are given to us to help each other. Yes. It's not to That's help good. me. That's good, yeah. The gifts are not there to help me, with the exception of one gift, and that is the gift of tongues. Mm. That gift is very Edifies. different from the other gifts because the purpose of that gift, uh, that gift is to help the person who yes. carries that gift. But every other spiritual mm. gift is there to help somebody else. Yeah. And, um, and if we can understand that, that you cannot ask a gift outside of 
your desire for community. Mm. Once again, it comes back to community. Because and it does. It always does. Because the yeah. gifts were given to the church. Yeah. Not to an individual. Yes. Given to the church. Even the, the powerful five-fold ministry gifts given to the church. Yeah. So that the church can be uh, motivated and grow and developed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the purpose of, of the spiritual gifts. It's phenomenal. And what I love about that is, um, I've seen this with myself and I've seen it with others, where mm. the moment people step into community, begin to have a desire and hunger for God, yes. gifts begin to surface that mm -hmm. they never knew were there. Mm -hmm. And somewhat, suddenly someone's saying, man, I don't know why, but I'm just... Yeah gravitating towards this yeah. and you can see I mean standing from the outside you can see this is God bringing something yes, about yes. the spirit has put it there yeah. and he's bringing yeah. it to the surface so um, I, I don't maybe you've experienced this as well sometimes people will come to our church from other places yeah and that's not a bad thing mm. um, and the, sometimes the first thing they would do is they come to me and say Pastor, I just want you to know I have a spiritual gift of X, Y, Z, and kind of, you yeah, know, yeah. You know. And the first thing I say to them is this: That's great, awesome, love to see those gifts, but uh, let's wait for the body of Christ to recognize them. In sure. Me. Yeah. And I go, what? No, mm. no, no. Let's do that. Let me let me give you an, a, a biblical example. Paul the apostle. Yeah. Okay. He meets Christ. He gets given, obviously he's given a gift, an apostolic gift. Yes. It's a powerful, powerful gift. Mm. But he can't exercise the gift. You know why? Yeah. The church is going, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> this guy killed us. Exactly. This guy, this, this, no, 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 no. You see, now, now people go, but how can the church do that? If God has already given the gift, shouldn't the gift start? No. Paul then goes into isolation. Yeah. For probably a couple of years. Yes. We don't really, probably a couple of years. Until somebody steps up and says, I'll be the mediator. Yes. Okay? Yes. And says, come. I, I takes Paul, Banan, brings him to the church. Come, they sit down together. This is a good guy. Mm. He, he's a, I know what he was before. This is a good yeah. guy. And, and the church starts him. warming up yeah. to him. And then you see the gifts of the Spirit beginning to operate through Paul yeah. because the church was ready for it. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Mm. No, that's, that's phenomenal. I think it's important for us to recognize that all the gifts that God has given us play a role in the body yes. and not just in the individual. That's right. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Finally, the last question. I hope that this was helpful to you today. I trust that you were encouraged by it. I'm definitely loving this. Like I said to Pastor Jan, we can just keep going. Um, that's what happens when you put pastors in the room, you know? Um, <laughs> so let's talk about how the Holy Spirit unites his church. Because mm. this is another thing, especially, this is, for me, this is a massive conviction for where our country is right now. Mm. More than anything, um, this is a time when we need to be uniting, coming together, yes, yeah. when we need to draw together. So mm. in your opinion, how important um, do you think it is for us to, to distinguish the difference between unity and uniformity? Because mm. many people think they're the same thing. Mm. Um, well, because we're united, we have to look the same, talk the same, act mm. the same thing, you know? Yeah. But it's actually in our differences that you begin to see unity coming yeah. to you. This is, speak yeah. to us a bit yeah. about that for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, for me, unity is not unity if it looks like uniformity. Yeah. Uh, that's something militant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in, in, in the true sense of the word. Yeah. Um, unity happens when people are different, but uh, actually find a place of commonality. Yes. yes. Find a point of commonality. Yeah. And that's sometimes very difficult because, again, biases come into play. Yeah. You say, yes, I know, I know we have a commonality, but I, I, I don't like your face. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that many times. <laughs> simple example. But, but it's like, so we have to overcome that. And how do we overcome that? Well, mm -hmm. Jesus actually laid the foundation when he taught his disciples. He laid the foundation of love. Yeah. Unity in the church is exercised with love. Yeah. Not the gifts of the Spirit. Mm. You see, sometimes, sometimes people say, no, no, you see, we, we are united as a church because we believe in these gifts or it's a doctrine mm. yeah, yeah. or a theology or even a practice. Mm. Uh, we, 
we do we do communion this way uh, we mm. we we baptize in the name of the Father and the Son <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. That's what unites us. No, that's, yeah. those are not the things that unite us. Yeah. What unites us is our values that stem out of the foundation of love. Yes. And that is why Jesus said, you just need to do two things to be united in the church. Love God, love people. They yeah. say, if you do that effectively, do you know how the people out there will recognize you as my united people? Come on, yeah. It's because you love one, one another. another. That's so good. And yeah. that is what, it's so simple. We make it so complicated. We make the work of the Holy Spirit mm. so complicated. And, and um, that, is, that is what love does. It's so beautiful for me, mm. you know. Um, mm. you, you and I can eat different food, types of food, because maybe of our culture or whatever. Mm. Mm. But the two of us together in Christ both eat of the bread of life. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. We, we can dress differently because we're culturally different or whatever. Yeah. But united in Christ, we are all dressed in the righteousness of yes. God. Yes. Oh, come on. This is and so good. That, that is what the Spirit does. That mm. it's, 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 it's not something we actually have to... It's not difficult. Yeah. It's very easy. Love Simple, God. Straightforward. Love people. And there's a unity that brings you together. It's yeah. the fact that we all love God, we all love people, mm -hmm. and we have one bloodline running through us, the blood yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. That's so good, Pastor Johan. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. And I think, you know what? What this does is it causes us and it forces us to see things in a different way. Mm. It forces us to look across the room, see the humanity in someone, and see people as people to be loved the yeah. way Jesus loved yeah. them. Yes. And especially, let's be brutally honest for a second, especially in the cultural climate that mm. we are living in right now, mm. in the socioeconomic climate, where everybody's finding a reason to not be united, yeah. where people are finding yeah. reasons to be divided. Yeah. It is especially now our job as believers to look across the room and say, you know what, rather than you know, finding the political um, disposition mm -hmm. that separates us mm -hmm. or the racial or the ethical or yeah. whatever belief system right now this is what binds us together yeah. it is jesus and yeah. the work that is done in us and the work that he will continue to do in That's us and right. for that reason we continue to love yes. i'm so encouraged by this pastor johan thank you so much for your time thank you for your wisdom i trust that your book will do so well um, i'm excited to see it go online and in a few weeks time you'll be able to buy his book on amazon if you've got a kindle um, and you'll be able to buy the e-version so let me encourage you to read it it yeah. will bring so much clarity in your life thank you so much for joining us i am excited to see how you begin to apply these principles that we've learned and how god will begin to work in you and through you in your life. As usual, let me leave you with a blessing today. May the Lord bless you mm -hmm. and may the Lord keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and may he give you his peace. Go well and have a great week.